Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are finishing our last and final teaching out of the Word of God on this little series of Have I Been Limiting God? Have I Been Limiting God? We've looked at a lot of things this week on reasons why things you could be doing to limit God. First, we started talking about the carnal mind, the fleshly desires, the fleshly senses, the carnality that comes with having a three-part being, being a spirit, having a soul, living in a body. These carnal things that could cause you to look at the senses instead of looking at the spirit because the faith operates in the spirit. We talked about that, and then we talked about unbelief. You know, with the man that says, I believe, help, my, help thou my unbelief. Learning what it means to get rid of unbelief, getting it out of your life. We talked about, in, uh, we talked about ignorance. Ignorance. We talked about what does it mean to just not know. And the problem with ignorance, we looked at different places in the Word of God where it says, Brethren, have you not be ignorant? Over and over and over does it talk about that, that you should know. That you should know. Faith cometh by hearing, but you have to hear the knowledge of it. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we need to make sure that we know the Word of God. And then finally, we talked about offense. What does it mean to be offended as somebody else or to offend? Now, I want to say this as a clarification point from yesterday, that when we talk about offense, and, I, and I, I briefly said this, but I just want to make sure the point's clear. There is people that got offended at what Jesus said, but what Jesus said was not offensive. What Jesus said was sharp and direct. The word of God, God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is powerful. It is alive. It is moving. The word of God is, is, is powerful. It's sharp. But Jesus didn't use words that were offensive. Now, words that are offensive is when you cuss the guy out that cuts you off driving down the road. That's offensive. You're, you're, you're using words in an offensive manner. But there's a way where you can speak the truth and somebody be offended. You speaking the truth is not you being offensive. I hope this makes sense, church. I just want to make this point clear because we said yesterday you should not offend nor should you take offense. And what we mean by that, I don't say, I don't mean that you should waver or move or speak less truth. No, you need to be speaking the truth at all times. If somebody takes offense to the truth, that's not you being offensive. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that blesses you. I just wanted to throw that point of clarification in. I was praying on that last night. Just wanted to make sure you understood that a f be speaking in an offensive manner is you speaking hurt, you speaking negativity, you speaking out of anger and wrath and malice. If you speak in love and you speak the truth and you speak the truth in love, then if somebody takes offense, that's on them. That's not on you. Never compromise the truth. But today, I'm going to talk about the last final thing of this series when it comes to have I been limiting God. Just one more thing to look at that could be the reason why you are not seeing the abundance in your life that you think you should and this this one is the if I don't have many pet peeves but this would be one of them this is this today is going to be one of the reasons why you are not seeing the abundance that you should and this is going to be very direct but I hope this blesses you and this should teach you a few things today on how to be godly, how to live godly. So I'm going to pray and then we're just going to get started. So Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I pray you bless this word. Let it go forth and bless the hearer in Jesus' name. I pray this word springs up, brings forth fruit, chastens us with fire, purifies our heart, our mind, our, our words. Let us be people after you, living after you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So John chapter 8, we might as well go after it pretty good. Let's look at verse, verse 42. 
And Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Because I, because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God words, God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God's. I'm going to keep reading just a little bit more. Then Jesus answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? And Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father. And ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my sayings, he will never see death. <laughs> Jesus, speaking to them, says, Ye are of your father the devil. But the point I want you to see is he says, When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Church, one of the big, one of the one of these main ways in which you can limit God is through lying. It's through lying. And we're going to see as we go through this lesson today. We might as well just go ahead and look at it. We're going to look at Luke chapter 16. We're going to see how, how lying is a limiting factor. It's not causing God to limit, causing you to not receive because Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Verse, verse 10, yeah. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the righteous mammon, who will commit you to commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus is saying, if you cannot be faithful in the little, then you cannot be faithful in the much. You say, God, if you'll bless me, I'll turn around and bless others. And then once God blesses you, you don't do it. You're not faithful. You are a liar. You are a liar. You say you're going to go and do something and help somebody out, and then you back out. You know what you are? You're a liar. Let your speech be yay, yay, and nay, nay. You either say, yes, I'm going to do it, or no, I'm not. And if you say yes, you do it. If you say no, then you don't have to. But you are a child. Your father is the devil if you stand around and lie, if you walk in lies. And you cannot be faithful over much if you cannot be faithful in the little things. I know this is coming off very direct. But I want you to see some things. Let's go ahead and let's go back. We're going to go back to the Old Testament a little bit. We're going to go and look at Numbers. Numbers chapter 23. I just want to read you a verse out of here, and then we're going to slip over to the Psalms. So Numbers chapter 23, we're going to look at verse 19. God is not a man. Go back. Go back and look at verse 18. And he took up his parable and said, Arise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and, ha and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed. I cannot reverse it. 
he had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Now I'm not going to go into all this, but I want you to see, God is not a man, and that he should lie. God is, there is no lie in God. All lying is of the devil. All truth is of God. Go to, I'm going to read this verse, and then we're going to come, and I'm going to reference it in a minute. I just want to read it to you out of the word, because faith cometh by hearing. So I'm going to read this, and then we're going to go back into the New Testament, and I want to explain to you why this is so important. Psalms 15, it's only five verses, so I'm going to read all five. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy city? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a veiled person is contemned, but he that honoreth feareth the that but he honoreth that fear the Lord. He sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He putteth out not his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these, thing, these things shall never be moved. He honoreth them that fear the Lord. He, he that sweareth to his own hurt and change not. Church, this is what we're talking about. Now we just, I'm going to let you hold that verse. Like I said, we're going to go into the New Testament. Because I want you to see, I just want to read some verses to you. I'm going to put this all together. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I want you to look at, let's look at verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God is trying to get you to be conformed into the image of Christ. We know that we're supposed to be conformed. We're supposed to be renewing our mind. Be ye there transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, I want you, I'm going to read this in Titus, and then we're going to put all these things together, and I'm going to explain to you one of the ways in which you can be limiting God. Titus chapter 1. Verse 13, this witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm rebuking you sharply, telling you, hey, listen up. We need this to change. This has to change. I'm trying to make sure that you're sound in faith. You want to talk about receiving from God? You need to understand what I'm about to say. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and consciousness is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work repro reprobate. So, church, let me tell you, we talk about Jewish fables and commandments of men. We're talking about these things of the world that turn you from the truth. It keeps you from walking in the true knowledge of God's word. If you're pure, all things are pure. But if you're defiled, all things. The, the, these things are unbelieving. Nothing's pure. Your conscience is defiled. You say you know God, but in your works you deny him. You say, oh, I believe that God's going to bless me. But in everything you do, you're reprobate. You're going against the knowledge of the truth. You're doing everything contrary to it. One of the main ways in which you limit God in this process is through lying. It says in Psalms 15, He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Let me teach you, church. There's a point 
and there is a lifestyle of honesty of honesty and church if you want to see the blessings of god if you want to see the glory of god if you want to be blessed in everything you do and walk with god and be faithful over many things and receive the blessings of god you cannot be a liar every lie is of the devil it talks about being disobedient here you profess to know God, but in your works you deny Him, being abom abominable and disobedient. Church, we've talked about disobedience is what's opposite of obedience. But disobedience, the seed of that, what causes disobedience in your life is disbelief. And as we've talked about this week, you must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Belief is an aspect of of faith belief is an aspect of faith that's why Titus says rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith you need to understand that if you lie if you lie if you walk in lies you are walking after the devil you are walking in what he wants for you not what God wants for you you are walking in disobedience Church, I'm going I'm to give you a couple examples real quick of why this is so important. And I, I have seen this personally. I have done this personally. So I, I can testify that this is real. There is things in life as you're going down the path that you agree to do. And you're, you have well intentions. You say, yes, I, I, will, I will help you do that. It's a month or two away. That month or two comes up. You don't want to do it. Or you have other things going on that you need to do. Or you have other things that you really need to take care of. But you need to honor your commitments. If you said you were going to do it, then you need to do it. A, a righteous man will swear to his own hurt and change not. Church, there is times where I have done things, been places, and helped other ministers out, helped other people out, done other things. Did it help me? No. It, 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 was, it was cool, I guess. Did it, did it do anything to bless me? No. Did it take time away from what I really needed to be doing? Absolutely. But I refuse to change off my word. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Even if it's to my own hurt. Even if it doesn't bless me. If I tell you I'm going to, I will not lie to you and back off of that. If I say I'm coming, guess what? I'm coming. If I say I'm going to help you, I'm going to be there and help set up and tear down, or I'm going to help do this with your ministry, or I'm going to pick you up from the airport, or it doesn't matter what I, what I say I'm going to do. If I say I'm going to do it, I will not change. I will swear to my own heart, even if it does not bless me. Now, I don't think I have to make this clarification point, but I'm going to just in case. This does not equate to sin. If you say, yes, I'm going to go help you do something, and the next thing, if you say, yes, I'll drive you somewhere, and then the next thing you know, they're saying, we're going to go rob a bank. That's, that's not what we're talking about. It's not, so let's, let's be clear here. Let's just not get off in ignorance and act like children when we're having this conversation. But if you're going to walk in the faithfulness of God, if you're going to be conformed into the image of Christ, so if Christ was truth, and so everything Jesus spoke, he spoke what, the, what he heard the Father say, and everything Jesus did, he saw it, what the Father did, and that's what he did. And God is not a man in that he should lie. So God is all truth, and God only speaks truth, because the devil is the father of lies. So Jesus only spoke truth. And you are supposed to be conformed into the image of that, which means you should only speak truth. Lying is a limiting factor, a big limiting factor on whether you will receive from God. Because if you lie, you are not trustworthy. You cannot be trusted over many things if you lie and are unfaithful in the little things. How is, gonna, how is God going to trust you to pastor a large group of people, to run a very big business, to uh, be in 
a political position over thousands or millions of people. How is God going to put you there if you can't be faithful in the little things? If you can't be faithful over your own household, if you can't be faithful over your small congregation, if you can't be faithful over the business that has a hundred people in it, why do you think God should bless you to have a, a, a business of a thousand people? Church, lying is a problem because lying is of the devil. Now, let me explain why this is a limiting factor. Besides the fact we understand now that you should not lie. You should do what you say you're going to do. You should be honorable. You should be, you should be one that upholds his word. The, the worlds were framed by the word of God. and Everything is upheld by the integrity of God's word. Everything stays together because God does not break his word. If God broke his word, then everything's going to, you would explode. The world would explode. Everything, all the molecules, everything is held together because of the word of God. Now, I'm going to explain why this is a limiting factor. And we've talked about this. If you can't be faithful over little, you can't be faithful over much. Church, you must walk in obedience. Abraham obeyed. Staggered not. The people of faith, great people of faith, when they heard God, they did not value risk. They did not weigh risk. They did not look at the circumstances to dictate whether they would obey God. They just obeyed God. And if you are walking in disobedience because you are walking in a lie, because you are walking in unfaithfulness, because you profess, you say, yes, I will do it, claiming that you know God and that you're an honorable person, and then you don't do it, your works show that you don't, you are disobedient. And unto every good work, you're reprobate. Holding true to your word is a good work, but you're reprobate. You're going against that. You say, yes, I will, and then you don't do what you said you were going to do. You said you were going to help somebody, and then you don't. You're not faithful. You're not trustworthy. You're a liar. And I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm rebuking you sharply because you need to understand you cannot receive from God in faith. You are limiting God. You are saying, God, I do not want this. And then you look up and say, God, I just don't know why I can't receive this in my life. Let me explain to you right now. Whatever is not a faith is sin. And if you are walking in disobedience and sin, you are walking away from God. You are not walking towards God. You are disconnecting yourself from God. And if you are disconnected from God, you will not receive from God. So, we talked about the carnal mind being in the flesh. We talked about unbelief. We talked about ignorance. We talked about offense. In our final lesson today, we're talking about lying. Lying is a limiting factor for why you cannot receive from God. Have you been limiting from God? Well, the question should be, have you been lying to other people? Have you been telling people you're going to do something and then you don't do it? Because if that is what's going on, you are not faithful. You are not a trustworthy person. You cannot be trusted to be over many things. So yes, the plan that you see of God that's very big will not come to pass until you show your faithfulness, your works in accordance with what you say. So I pray this blesses you. I know this was one of those that rebuke you sharply, but I'm trying to make sure you're in faith. Church, if you've done this, just repent. Turn the other way. And don't ever do it again. A true righteous man will swear to his own hurt and change not. If you say you're going to do something, then you need to do it. It doesn't matter what it is, obviously outside of sin. But if you tell somebody you're going to be somewhere at 7 o'clock, you better be there at 7 o'clock. If you tell somebody, I'm going to help you do this, then you do that. If you say, I'm going to pick you up, then you do it. It doesn't matter if, even if it doesn't bless you or causes hurt to another thing that you could be doing. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, then you do it. You walk in truth just as God is truth. Father, I thank you for this word. Let it rise up inside of us. Teach us how to be trustworthy people, honorable people who do not walk in lies. God, we bless you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Church, I pray you have a wonderful day today.